So up until now, we're used to the sort of ordinary product of two matrices. So if I have a matrix A and a matrix B, where let's say the matrix A is given by 1, 2, 3, 4, and the matrix B, which is given by 5, 6, 7, 8, then we can work out the product or the sort of normal product by just taking the rows of the first matrix and multiplying it by the columns of the second. So the sort of first component in the top left of the product is just going to be 1 times 5 plus 2 times 7, which is going to be 19. And then to get the second component in the first row, we take 1 and multiply it by 6 and 2 and multiply it by 8, and we add them together, then we would get 22. And we could work out the other components and they would turn out to be 40 feet, uh, 43 and 50 respectively. So this is the sort of ordinary product of two matrices, and I expect everyone who's watching this video should be familiar with this sort of concept. But it actually turns out that there's actually quite a, a sort of another way in which we can define the product of two matrices, which is known as the Kronecker product. And it's useful in certain applications, and one of them in particular in econometrics. So the idea here is let's say we have a two by two matrix A, which is A11, A12, a21 and A22, and we're taking the Kronecker product of that matrix with a matrix B, which is defined as B11, B12, B21, and B22. And note that I just have happened to have chosen two matrices which have exactly the same dimensions. That needn't be the case when we're talking about Kronecker products. In fact, you can sort of have any sort of product of two different matrices um, that you like. The dimensions don't have to match up in any way, shape or form, unlike the case where we're talking about just sort of ordinary multiplication of two matrices, where the, the number of columns of the second matrix has to be equal to the number of rows of the first matrix, for example. Okay, so now we're in a position where we can actually define what the Kronecker product is. So the Kronecker product of A with B is defined as A11 times the matrix B as its sort of top left component, if you like, but actually because I'm multiplying A11 times the matrix B, it's actually going to have four components here. The next four components on the sort of top right are going to be A12 times the matrix B. Then in the bottom left, I'm going to have A21 times the matrix B, and in the bottom right, we're going to have A22 times the matrix B. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken each of the components of A and we've multiplied them by the entire matrix B. So if we were to write this out in long form, what we would find is the first sort of component would be A11 times B11. The second component would be A11 times B12. The third component would be A21, oh sorry, not A21, A11 again, times B21 now and then we would have A11 times B22. Now, if we think about this component here, or this, this set of four components, we would just then have A12 times the corresponding elements in B. So that would be A12 times B11, A12 times B12, then we would have A12 times B21, and finally we would have A12 times B22. Okay, so those are the sort of top two blocks. And then to get the other two blocks, all we would do is we would do A11 times B11, etc. for this sort of first four. So that would be A21 times the various components in B. So that would be another four components. And then finally, we would have A22 times the various components of B. So those would form the last four components of the matrix. So notice that we've taken two matrices, which were themselves two by two, and in taking the Kronecker product, what we formed is we formed a matrix which is 4 by 4. In general, if I take the Kronecker product of a matrix A with a, another matrix B, where matrix A is, let's say, M by N and matrix B is P by Q, then the product actually has dimensions M, P by N, Q. And it's quite easy to see that because essentially what we're doing is we're taking each of the various components of A and we're multiplying it by the entire matrix B. So it's unsurprising that the corresponding uh, rows multiply and the corresponding columns multiply as well. So the reason I've introduced this particular type of matrix multiplication, the Kronecker product, is that it's going to be useful in describing sure estimators and also it's going to be useful in describing 
panel estimators, so random and fixed effects estimators respectively.